Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode in this new series, where I will introduce you how to create a compatible toolpath to work with your design micro PAD. In order for a customized fraction spotter to know where and how frequently to deposit the fractions on a paper, we have to program the machine. In a few words, the toolpath is a G-code file containing a set of instructions and coordinates that the machine will follow. For this tutorial, you will need access to RStudio, which you can download for free. If you need help downloading the software, please ask Daniel for more information. This tutorial will contain multiple parts, so take as much time as you need to get familiar with this process. Keep in mind that this is the first workflow established for making the toolpath, so there will be room for improvement to make this process more efficient and faster. With that being said, let's get started with making our toolpath. So let's first open our micro PAD design on Illustrator. The first thing we want to decide on is the kind of toolpath we want our fraction spotter to follow. And our toolpath is the kind of pattern the machine will follow to deposit the fractions. In this tutorial, let's make a snake-like pattern as shown. The next step requires us to look at the fraction spotter and UCCNC software, which is a software interface to control the fraction spotter. I briefly discuss how to connect the device to the PC in the second video of this series, so I recommend checking out that video at 40 seconds. It's important to distinguish that the UCCNC software is the real-time machine coordinates, while the coordinates in the Illustrator program are with regards to an A4 paper. In other words, we have two different coordinate systems, and all the coordinates we are to read from Illustrator will be translated to machine coordinates on the CNC machine, and thus later for creating the decode toolpath. To begin creating our toolpath, we need to know the center point of the first well, as well as the spacing between each well in machine coordinates. To find the center point, we will manually measure this position with the help of the CNC software. You will use the jog feature, located in the tab on the left, and incrementally adjust the X, Y, and Z position until you are satisfied with its positioning about the center of the well. Once you are satisfied with this positioning, write down the coordinates and then home your device to zero in the X and Y position. Now type in your coordinates in the MDI window as follows. This will allow your machine to move to the well position and allows you to double check if you are satisfied with the coordinates. Now we'd like to know the spacing between the center point of each well. We go back to Illustrator and set the reference point as a center. Since my wells are defined in one layer, I now double click on the wells. All the wells are evenly spaced in the X and Y position respectively, so we just need to compare the spacing from the first well. After comparing the coordinates, the X spacing is 8.595 millimeters and the Y spacing is negative 10.117 millimeters. Now we have all the data needed to create our coordinates table.
The last thing you will need to do is copy the selected entries and save the data on Notepad. This is the data that will be imported into RStudio to generate the toolpath. Before we continue, I want to share that a sample text file and R file is made available to you in both the Google Drive and Team GitHub. These sample files will help you in creating your first program, and I'd recommend using them as you follow along. If this is your first time using RStudio, I don't want to overwhelm you with coding jargon, so I ask that you copy and paste the content and deep dive into the coding structure on your own time. You will be able to create your own toolpath by copying everything in the R file and pasting it onto a new R markdown file. And I will show you where to input your coordinates, otherwise you will get an error when it asks for an input file. This file is broken down into six sections, each important in creating your toolpath. We have directory, initial conditions, file input, G-code setup, toolpath generator, and output file. This is my recommended outline in setting up your R file. We begin with directory. This section tells us where RStudio is accessing files from. If you notice that the location of your coordinates text file does not match the current directory, you will have to change the directory in a future step. Otherwise, RStudio will not find your text file. Next, we look at the initial conditions. These are a list of user-defined inputs necessary for our G-code. While some entries, like author and date, are only for documentation purposes, everything from set feed rate and below will be essential for the rest of the code. You will determine these values based on your previous calibration with the fraction spotter. I've included some tips in the sample text file to help. Now it's time for file input. Here you will tell RStudio which file has your coordinates. If your directory does not match the location of your file, you will modify the directory here by filling the user-defined input directory. Then we can type the name of our text file here. Next up is G-code setup. Here we begin to structure our G-code file. The sample text file provided displays what this will look like. All elements, except the pattern, will be defined here. This leads us to a toolpath generator, which is where we define our pattern. This code was specifically made for a snake pattern starting from left to right. If you want to modify the snake pattern or make a completely new pattern, you will modify the code here. Finally, this leads us to the output file. Here, we tell RStudio our file name and where we want to store it. Just like before, we modify the directory and set where we want to store our file. Then, in the last line, we tell RStudio what we want to name our file. Here's a demonstration of how I operate this program.
with the text file saved, we can now begin the fractionation process covered in part two. Thanks for watching.